name is Thea Hamry and I'm currently interning with Pacer Center this fall 2021 and this coming spring 2022. I'm currently a student at St. Catherine University in St. Paul, Minnesota studying social work and minoring in chemical dependency. Today I'm here with my parents to talk about how they supported me through school and then how they continue to support me and advocate for me. This is my mom and this is my dad, Cynthia and Jack. And for the first question, when did you first realize that I had learning challenges? Well, one thing as a parent you try to do is understand your children have differences and that everybody learns at their own rate and when they're ready. And so we waited for that to happen with you. We knew you were not early in reading and early in learning to write, but uh, we knew that we were in a good school system where you know, those uh, improvements would happen. But it probably wasn't until the second grade when um, one of your teachers had invited the school psychologist to come in to watch you um, reading because they thought you might have had a vision problem. And um, he did, and he thought that you did recognize that there might be something similar to his own child and sent us to an eye clinic um, to get evaluated where they performed vision therapy. And, and they did confirm that you had um, a problem with your eyes and, uh, um, and getting them to track together and then put you through a program that lasted you know, a good year. Um, and while you made improvements, you still were not progressing at the same rate as other students, and um, you were progressing. Um, and at the same time, you had developed a, a health condition that required monthly visits to the doctors and shots and procedures, and so we were pretty sidetracked in a, in a way on important items um, that kept us from discovering that you had dyslexia. Um, and so you continued with the health problem through sixth grade, um, got through middle school, and we we're fortunate to be in a wonderful school system, and actually in Minnesota, all of the school districts are terrific in helping students be successful. Um, for instance, in third and fourth grade, you weren't required to do cursive. Um, that was a, a, a problem for you, so just printing was fine, just so that you could get concepts down, not spend a lot of time on handwriting, and there were clues along the way that there might be something like dyslexia happening, but we were also busy with vision and your health. And, and so we didn't take a look at that until high school. Yeah, and, and in that period, she actually was tracking better in the language skills than she was in mathematics. And children learn at different rates, but we, uh, went along with the school in assisting those language skills and hoping that the math skills would catch up at a later date. And they really had segmented math uh, training for different levels of math ability. So there were other students who math wasn't as, so you know, still didn't dawn on anybody that there might be something else going on. High school got harder and um, I remember, you know, that you were also getting very anxious about school and you'd always been a very conscientious student and worked hard and actually did pretty well in spite of your challenges. And uh, in uh, sophomore year, we had started you with counseling because of the anxiety that was coming about with school and we wanted to make sure that school would always be a positive place for you and uh, the counselor would help. But I remember sitting there with her and you saying it's like your brain was taking in information differently and it was wired differently. And with that, she suggested getting in touch with PACER and also with um, getting a neuropsych review. And I did reach out to PACER and they were wonderful in giving us guidance on how to go about getting um, further help for you. On the mental health side, they recommended reaching out to NAMI and then with the schooling side, getting that neuropsych review because that would help us bring a case to the school that would support you getting additional services. You had been on a 504 and starting in sixth grade, I believe it was, and, uh, and that went through middle school, but you really could benefit from additional services that were part of IAP. The neuropsych review actually said yes, you had 
um, dyslexia and their anxiety showed up, um, definitely performance related. And, um, and so we now had a case helped by PACER and putting together to the school district that you needed an IEP. And up to that point, IEPs for them were students who were acting out and failing school and you weren't doing any of that, but your anxiety was going up, up, up. And so we were very concerned. We thought that those additional services, more time, special testing room, um, you know, getting some tutoring, all of that would help reduce that and, and make sure you were more successful in school. And at the same time, you know, our, our philosophy as parents would try to enable their passions. So we encouraged her both in sports as well as in academics to involve herself in things like yearbook that would uh, give her an opportunity to test your talents and skills. Mm -hmm. For the second question I have is, what ways did you support me and how are you continuing to support me in college and in life? Well, you know, once you got that IEP, the school was, you know, assigned you um, a person to oversee your academic side and, and getting notices to your teachers about the you know support that you would receive and while they kind of took on more from you we always were in the background um, helping you at home you know providing you support for your homework um, attending regular meetings that we would get together with the teachers and uh, your caseworker at high school and uh, find out was there anything else that could be done in the way of accommodations, how is it all going? And, and, and try to focus on learning styles that work best with Thea, like repetition was one of the things that helped Thea learn mm -hmm. uh, some subject matter. And so we would continue going through those things. Well, uh, and also what teachers and classes were best fits for you. Right. You know, teachers who utilize technology, because you were good with technology, um, as a way of communicating and, and providing information, you know, because there was a um, cloud area for you to go and get the information from lectures and, and homework and notes, and uh, not all teachers did that. And, so, and each child has a different learning styles that work best for them, and part of the discovery process as a parent is to figure out what works best for each child. Our son, is different than our daughter in terms of how they learn and our job was to try and help figure that out so we can assist each of them on what way will help them get the material comprehend the material and apply the material and you know part of that was knowing that you were organized thankfully you had learned and really honed those skills in high school on staying organized and you did better when your teachers were also very organized and very um, strong communicators and provided you know syllabuses for you to plan out your work. And, and you could see the results. The results were showing up in the grades and in your own comfort in taking classes and taking challenges. But it was an ongoing process and yet today I mean you are in college much more um, on your own, d definitely very capable at managing yourself with the help of your program in at St. Kate's, but uh, we're there in the background to be your cheerleaders, but also your supporters. But that transition from high school to college was really kind of came over to you um, to manage in college. And high school was to prepare you to be a self-advocate and to um, learn how to do things on your own and, and work with the school. And thank goodness that diagnosis helped because you had become more assertive in getting the types of help that worked best for you. Mm -hmm. My next question is, what was the most challenging for you both in getting me support? It was probably that initial getting the school to um, agree to giving you an IEP and, and uh, as I mentioned it was because you were a good student and you weren't a problem behaviorally um, and they were more accustomed to those students needing the help in a large school 
like your high school. Um, they have just so much of a budget to provide that. So they listened though, and they heard the case, they saw the I, or the uh, neuropsych test from a psychologist, and that was compelling. And, and, and that's an important point because even talented students could get washed out because they have not been given the tools that would help them mm -hmm. learn even better. Mm -hmm. And thank goodness our school got it, mm -hmm. comprehended it, and allowed it. My concern was the anxiety was going to overtake everything mm -hmm. if we hadn't gotten you that support. Um, and thankfully, I didn't understand it with the neuropsych review that it would show not just the dyslexia, but also how important the anxiety needed to be addressed too. Mm -hmm. um, my next question is, what have you learned through the process of supporting me? Never give up. Yeah, no, it's true. And, um, and how much you can learn from you, Thea. I mean, we have, <laughs> you've grown so much, but you've taught us about what it is to support you because in a lot of ways you have given us the direction either directly or indirectly um, of what your needs were and how to support you listening to your child listening and, and to it's your not student. a bad thing to get accommodations it's a good thing you need to understand everyone learns differently and getting the help that will assist them is a good thing My next question is, as parents with a child with a learning disability, what would you have liked to know coming into supporting me? Well, I think one of the challenges for us was when to intervene, at what age and what grade. You know, sometimes I wish we had started sooner in exploring other things. You know, we had some things that sidetracked us that were very important, um, you know, with your health and your eyes. but. At what point do you, because the thing that you do learn as parents today that we didn't get growing up was each child learns differently and they come to it at different rates of time. And so we were waiting for that to show up, but maybe we waited a little too long, but in a way when I look back it happened the way it was supposed to happen too. So sometimes you have to follow your gut, listen to the experts, but most importantly know your child. And in many ways, it's, it's recognizing that the talents that are part of them. I mean, I, I remember when Thea was younger, she was fearless. Uh, one example would be in the summertime and the flowers, she saw the bees out there and she wanted to collect some. So she decided she was going to. And the first one she grabbed stunned her. Well, that would deter most people, but in theory, Thea's case, what did she do? She went and got a couple of mittens and continued to collect them in a jar because she wasn't going to let a little bit of pain get in the way of her, her stated goal of seeing what bees were like. Her own single goal, I might add. We didn't know she was doing this. <laughs> yeah, I snuck out. <laughs> Uh, my last question is, do you have any advice for other families out there who have children with learning disabilities? Uh, utilize all of the great resources that PACER has. You know, start there if you have any doubt whatsoever in your child um, and wonder, and doubt meaning something's not going right with their learning, reach out to PACER, um, reach out to the experts, talk to your teachers. And the counseling centers within the schools. Right. There's a lot of resources. But those teacher conferences, don't miss one. You know, find out what's going on in the classroom because you're not there with them. And, uh, and most importantly, talk to your child and find out what's going on in their head so you know how learning feels to them because you want it to be positive. And, 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 and thankfully, and, it's been positive throughout for you, Thea. Yeah, and if, if they seem to be demonstrating any behavior about being against school, see that as a signal that it it's telling you there's a problem in school and your job is to try and figure that out for them because every child should have positive attitudes toward learning. 
And when they don't, there is something there that needs to be identified and dealt with. And the best way is to really know the teachers. Yeah. Spend time, go to the conferences. That's important. Stay in touch. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to add? You know, there is light at the end of the tunnel. And maybe your child is younger right now and you're wondering, what do we do for them? But you get there and then your child is a senior in college and doing amazing. Yeah. And as a parent, I mean, you're amateurs when you start. They don't give you a handbook. You have work to do. And uh, welcome it because it's truly a gift to have a child like Thea. And it's a wonderful journey. Yeah. Well, thank you for doing this video with me. Yeah. You're thank welcome. you.